is Juan Carlos Arevalo. He works for BME, which is the Spanish Stock Exchange and is part of the SIX company. And he's also going to speak about performance. Okay, so the, the question Juan Carlos is making is if we are uh, fast enough. C++ is a good uh, reason for performance, or performance is a good reason for C++. So performance is just my second reason for C++, because my first reason is because I enjoy a lot. So go ahead. Thank you. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Juan Carlos Arevalo. I work at the Spanish Stock Exchange. I have a PhD in electronics and automation. Uh, I've been working in IT for about 13 years now. I started doing uh, control algorithms for robots. Then I moved to consumer electronics, where I work with embedded systems. And then I moved to the financial industry. And you may think that's nothing to do with what we are doing embedded systems and fintech, but uh, they all are low latency systems, such as, as video games, streaming applications. Every, nowadays, everything has to be fast, right? So what do you need to do to make a system go faster? First, you need to know the system, because you need to optimize whatever it is doing. So what does the, um, the stock exchange may do? Well, it's a place where you put an order, somebody else puts another order. If you get an order of um, same of better price, you match them, then you bought a security. For example, a piece of a company or whatever else you're doing. And what does a system need to do in order to ensure that? Well, we need to connect to clients. They need to be able to send messages to us. Uh, since we are a key industry in the country, well, we are under a lot of regulation and a lot of control, so we need to keep records. And also we need to do the exchange of the, the matching of the... So we have this system that has these four key responsibilities. One is connecting clients, the other is keeping records, matching orders, and publish information and some kind of other things that we may or may not talk about. So we have this big system that does everything and is connected to clients. So what is the slowest thing that there is in computing? Well, disk access. So let's just separate that. We are not embedded platforms, so we can use a lot of um, processes. We Resources is not a problem for us. So we separate this, this access, and then we have the rest of the system, this access. What else is slow? Well, network connection can be kind of low, slow. Let's separate that. And then we have two different kind of users. One is a supervisor, which we need because regulations. Then we got an access point just for them, because that can be slower than the clients. They need to be fast, okay? So we have this separated. Then, what else is, doesn't need to go as fast as the matching. It's true that statistics and bilateral negotiation, this is to peer-to-peer -peer negotiation, they are not part of the market, they do their business elsewhere, and then they just say, hey, record that and send it to regulators. Well, okay, we do that, but that doesn't have to be really fast. So we have statistics, bilateral negotiation, and everything is just separated very well. Okay, so then we have a single process for order matching, which is the thing that needs to go blazingly fast. At this point, what can we do? Basically, what many sensitive people need to think about, it's just throw more hardware at the problem. I mean, if you have a far faster computer, your stuff will go faster, right? Perfect. Just uh, put in a faster server, put more RAM, put more ROM, put whatever, more resources, everything is okay. But then there's a point when you need to go faster, but only doing that is not going to solve your problem. You can buy the fastest computer, but you cannot go faster if you don't think about it. So that's, and it's cheaper to buy hardware than to hire developers. 
but you have the developers. So they have to think. We can, we have a legacy system, so, but we can use C++ for many things. One of it is benchmarking. I have to clarify since the whole discussion before. This is specifically to our case, and if you want to benchmark, you should benchmark to your case and apply your findings to your case only. This is not general. <laughs> <laughs> Unless, okay. So, what do we do here? We have templates, which is my favorite thing about C++. It's uh, the best. We are here, since we are matching orders, we need to have some kind of system to order those orders. And if you allow me the reuse of the question, of the word there. So we're trying to compare here some different data structures and we are interested in four things, access time, searching, deletion, and insertion. Nothing, nothing fancy, right? That's what you need to, so what are we going to benchmark? We are going to test vector set, an order set, map, an order map, and well, I put array there, but it's not really that interesting to match array to that, so it was a type, let's say typo. Here is our results. Then we have that STD vector is the king in everything. A little bit surprising, but let's more on, on that. Then we know that uh, on other containers are very fast for access and um, Searching, well, access and searching is kind of the same thing in on other containers, but allow me that um, leeway here. Um, insertion and deletion also very fast, but we know here that depending on the type that we are using, the results are different. By the way, this is, and uh, results are in microseconds, I think, but that's not very important. The important thing is which one is faster because we are using it in, uh, in different system than this. Well, if we know that data types matter, then let's try to use some data types that actually resemble what we use in the system. It's not important, as we said, uh, benchmarking for general things, if that's not what you're using. So what are we using here? We're using two complex structures. One has a contract, which is a security that you're going to trade and the price, the other, which is a little bit more like what we use, it's a contract of security, you have the price, and then you have the guy that is buying and selling. All right, so we compare those two with the same program, that's why we use templates, the same program serves to do this, and we get that access is faster than vector, which is no surprise. Insertion, that's kind of surprising, is faster for vectors that may have to do with the compiler, optimizations, and so on. And then we have deletion and search, which are kind of skewed toward the unordered set, but another map is there as well. I'm not really sure what the differences are in implementations, but I do know that the unordered set is a red black tree, and I think another map also, but they have nuances, so let's get, uh, then we have this, which is the, complexity of everything that it's taught in, in the school, which is very nice. And for your particular application, you may want to try and test it. Why? We see we have surprising results here, but that's why we do have surprising results. Then again, if we go to the, this is the tricky structure. Our results are there that on other set now, it's starting to take over vector. That's, um, Interesting, and it's what's supposed to happen, right? And then deletion is better for set, and search is another set, another maps. So what can we learn about this? Well, we can learn that uh, theoretically, another set and another container should be faster for insertion, deletion, and search. We found out that for a particular case, that is not true in many cases, but why? Well. We know that theoretically, this is what's supposed to happen. The O1 is faster than ON. But how big is the one and how big is the N? Or the log N? If we are, we're talking here about nanoseconds and microseconds, it's uh, very important. Here, it, it's important. If you're talking about milliseconds, then 
doesn't matter, right? But here, the, the one can be important. So what we do, we use another thing that is very important in C++ is that you can customize many things. So what we are doing is using a custom hash for the um, hash tables. And then we get the results that are in line with theory. So the one was really important in the other side. Now we are using the murmur hash and then we are using a custom hash. Why are we using a custom hash? Well, it was interesting and we know exactly what we are hashing. So we can optimize. And then as the um, sample size go higher, our custom hash is better and slower and lower sample sizes, more hash is better, set is over there. I it, think it might be a mistake in the, <laughs> in the running of the system or something that I did wrong in that particular test, but I left it there so you see that there is variation. For the three key structure, we have again that vector comes in. So that I think it's something to do with the optimization that we're doing. We're doing all three, by the way. But that's interesting to know because we need to know, we actually do know how large would be our sample size, how big are the structures that we are dealing with, so we can choose which container we, can, we need to use to make our application go faster. Everything together, okay. To search things, um, anonymous containers are very fast, so they are going to do. If you really need to have things ordered because order is expensive, then the confer, compare function, which is kind of the same exercise we did with the hashing, should be fast and optimized for your thing, for what you're doing. It doesn't make sense to compare things that you don't want to compare if you're losing time, right? And then for basic data types, nothing big vector. That was surprising for me, but it's not beaten by anybody in our test, at least. And uh, the other takeaway, it's nobody's forcing you to use only one data structure to make your, your program. You can store indexes in, the, in an another container, then just go and fetch the data in, in another container. It, it might, have, it might be good for you, you have to test it out. Uh, the key takeaway here is test it out and if it goes faster for you, go with it. Uh, I have uh, five more minutes so I can give you my bonus points. I have two bonus points for you. One is sprintf is very, very slow if you use formatting. If you use formatting, it's very slow. It's, so if you want to fill something with zeros, just do a, a mem set or, or whatever, or assign it, and then just paste the thing, whatever you want to paste it, and it will be a lot faster. We tried it for our application with, um, it's over there in the code, you have a sprintf with uh, three, then or, or with integers, it's, uh, it's very slow if you use formatting. Next thing is that, um, Use the C++ mantra, you don't pay for what you don't use. So this is not really a C++ thing that we used to do, but as I said, we have a legacy application, so we used to do a lot of MK time structures to compare number of days. And uh, if you see the um, bar graphs, uh, this side is really, really faster than that side because we are using just epoch time, there's an E missing. To compare the to compute the difference of days instead of using MK time, so the another takeaway here is apply that C++ mantra because you won't get um, disappointed. And um, that's everything I had prepared. So if you have any questions, I'd be glad to. Hello? Okay, now it's no? Hey. Yeah. <laughs> so let me let me start with now? No? No, no here. Yeah, here. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let me start with a, a question. Uh, you know in advance the size of uh, your data set. 
for no. the bench for the benchmarking that you have done. Yes. For uh, the now, yes. Uh, first question that I have: Do you make reserve on the vector or not? It depends on what we are testing. There are some data sizes that we know in advance, and yeah. some that we don't. So we are testing here more the unknown part. So I did not use reserve because oh, so of that. So you didn't use uh, yes. reserve. Yes, reserve yeah. is faster if you right. reserve the data. Uh, right. Yes. Uh, uh, the second thing I wanted to say, and then I, I'll give you time to make questions. Yeah. The, <laughs> yeah. the second thing uh, I wanted to say, uh, complexity theory is very useful, sure. But complexity theory basically is for a Turing machine and not a modern computer. Uh, which I mean is that when you use uh, complexity theory, you are completely neglecting the catch. Yeah. And the catch makes a difference. And part of the success of STD vector is that it's very catch efficient. So that, that is something, I know that you are going to ask a lot of things. <laughs> Yeah, that's. Uh... I, I mean, the third thing is not about containers. Uh, Joaquin is my expert in containers. I'm only a Padawan. <laughs> but uh, the third thing I, I wanted to say is about uh, printf or, or sprintf. I told before, yes, don't use is. that C thing. We don't use C things. So libfmt has proved to be faster than printf. And one of the reasons why printf there are many reasons why printf is not fast enough, and besides it is type and safe. But one uh, of the many reasons is because it is locale dependent. Yeah. And now, the master. <laughs> Thank you. I have two questions, but uh, one of them is a request to, to Jose Daniel. In fact, I think it is about time that you people in the academia uh, come up with a complexity theory that takes into account cash effect. I know that there's like some research on cash oblivion stuff or something, but uh, we are living with uh, what Donald Kenneth made up like 40 years ago. So I, I think you're a little behind the times. <laughs> so it would be appreciated. And uh, my, my, my question to you, uh, have you tried uh, Student order map is very slow. Have you tried uh, some alternatives not in the standard using some other uh, technique? I'm going to be talking about that, mm -hmm. so I won't yeah. enter into details, but uh, have you measured those alternative containers? Because some of them will potentially give you fast insertion because they are flat, they are using basically a buffer, and uh, fast lookup because they are doing the hash. Thank you. Um, I'm not aware that we have tried them. As I said, this is yet uh, still a, a legacy application, and, but uh, we do things so we can advance. So th there's sometimes there's a lot of inertia, but um, now that we are scraping for nanoseconds, then uh, yes, we will try them. <laughs> Thank you. Let me, you, let me tell you something. You want to be this afternoon when Joaquin is making your presentation. You really want to be there. Thank you. So, more questions? Uh, thank you for the presentation. I seem to have heard that you were using O3 for optimizing the code. Uh, was that true? Yes. Um, have you found any- or O5? Three, yes. Okay. Uh, have you found it to be buggy in any situation where you had to resort to O2 or it was always fine? Well, uh, we did have to come down in optimizations when we were using the system for another machine, but in it was some it had something to do with older versions. But if you are uh, in production, we never had an issue. For your with machine, the, yeah. Uh, for for our machine, happen. it's it's okay, working thanks. better. But if you are doing for like different versions of an operating system, then you might want to dial back a little bit on the optimizations. Good. More questions? That means that you are hungry. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much. Very interesting. Thank you.